Joining us now to discuss the Bitcoin markets is Steve McClurg, CIO and co-founder of Valkyrie. Welcome, Steve. Hi, thank you very much for having me. So, listen, I mean, it's been a little dull of late. Uh, I, you know, range bound is the word that keeps coming up, a bit of interest overnight. But for the most part, we seem to be stuck in this pattern. Do you see this continuing for a while or is there a breakout somewhere along the way? Yeah, as far as Bitcoin goes, um, I definitely see us stuck here over the summer. Um, you know, the famous saying, uh, sell in May and go away, come back again, St. Ledger's Day, I, I think it's going to apply to uh, Bitcoin this session. Uh, you've got a little bit of exhaustion uh, from buyers at the moment, and we probably won't see that pick back up until after Labor Day. Uh, when institutional markets tend to come back with uh, full force and, and liquidity into the markets. So, I mean, let, let's look a bit further forward then. And, and, and the big thesis that we've often had, and certainly the one that was driving us uh, before we get into this space, was inflation. Um, and I'm just picking up here on a tweet that you uh, posted over the weekend where you flagged comments by Larry Summers. You said this, he had said the surge in U.S. house prices is scary. Uh, you can just break down your thinking on this. You know, what do you see? I mean, are we talking here about inflation being transitory, as the Fed seems to suggest it is, something to do with this movement out of COVID, or is it a more reflent, re entrenched inflationary trend to which the Treasury Secretary was suggesting? Yeah, uh, what I'm seeing is inflation is is certainly here to stay. Um, it's it's definitely not transitory. And really what is creating inflation this time is, is two things. It is increase in monetary supply, but it's also increase in wages. And that was something that we didn't have 10 years ago when uh, the Fed began to you know, print uh, unprecedented amounts of money. Um, and that also applies, by the way, to other central banks as well. Uh, wages stayed stagnant during that time, which is why we didn't see inflation then. And what we're seeing uh, over the last year and what we're going to continue to see is wage increases. Uh, during COVID, uh, the U.S. and many other governments around the world not only printed money, but also subsidized people's income uh, with, uh, with, with checks, sometimes larger than the amount that they were making. And people just aren't willing to come back to work unless there is a level of pay that's equal to or greater than uh, the amount that they were making uh, during COVID. So uh, we expect to see wage growth continue. We expect to see other stimulus packages uh, come into the market in, 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 in many different forms. So we not only expect to see things like housing and materials to build houses and other assets, uh, we also expect to see Bitcoin rise on those inflation scares as well. But, but how good of an a inflation hedge is Bitcoin at this stage proving to be? I mean, on a short-term basis, at least, it seems to behave more in response to expectations for risk assets generally, and obviously the Fed's monetary support is a part of that. But on a you know, month by month basis, how it responds to CPI data and so forth, I'm not so certain that it's, it's responding. I mean, how do you define this notion of Bitcoin as an inflation hedge? Yeah, so... Um you're, you're right, by the way, that uh, Bitcoin has uh, reflected risk assets uh, more than any other types of correlation in the market. Uh, but inflation is also uh, a factor as well, as, as, as are all risk assets, whether it's uh, equities, whether it's private equity, whether it's uh, housing, other hard assets, art, wine. Uh, but Bitcoin, due to its limited supply, due to its um, actual use as a monetary currency, um, in, in many places globally, and that trend is growing, uh, we should begin to see uh, it move with inflation along with other risk assets. So uh, another factor that's been you know, discussed a little bit of late is you know, the, the moves in the hash rate, uh, specific, specifically as it has been affected by China's crackdown on miners there. Um, and, and mining operations now being relocated to Canada and so forth and the US. I mean, is this affecting your outlook for Bitcoin's price? Yeah, what it's doing is actually making people a lot more excited about mining. Um, established miners, uh, due, to, due to the hash rate decreasing by over 50%, uh, and of course, the difficulty 
uh, dropping uh, pretty significantly over the weekend. Uh, miners are making a lot more in revenue uh, than they than they would, and regardless of how much power they're using, uh, the the profits are certainly there, uh, even at the price of, of Bitcoin being half of uh, of its all time highs. Uh, so we are seeing a lot more excitement in the mining space, whether it's in Canada, like you mentioned, uh, Texas has become a very big place to uh, uh, to mine as well uh, off of the uh, independent energy grid there, uh, as, as, as well as other locations around the world. Um, so it, it's actually really good for the ecosystem to uh, move a lot of these miners out of China and, and make them a little bit more decentralized uh, in countries around the world.